Hey guys, welcome back to the channel and today we're going to talk about putting your games on an external media device and specifically today we're actually looking at SSDs. Now last time I did something like this, I was using an external hard drive to uh, play games off of with the idea being of course that you could take that hard drive with you, take it to a computer lab, maybe you live somewhere where there's like a game lab nearby, maybe you're on a college campus that has a game lab as uh, my university did when I I was back in college some gosh it's been like five years now anyways there is a lot of utility with being able to carry your games place to place on just a physical hard drive or SSD maybe you're like me and you have multiple computers around your place where maybe you have like an office setup and then a living room setup and you don't want to have to hassle with um, installing games on multiple computers and it's just easier for you to have one amount of storage, one physical device that you can just plug into whichever uh, computer you're planning on playing those games off of. So to run my test, I'm actually gonna need just a couple of different things. First, I'm gonna need a commodity grade SSD. Uh, this is just a 240 gigabyte ADATA one, though I'm actually gonna be using my inland SSDs because they are actually about the cheapest on the market right now. You can actually get an inland 480 gigabyte SSD on Amazon right now for $65. Uh, and that ships straight to your door. So I'll leave links to uh, some of this stuff down below, but you can actually get up and running with a significant amount of storage, 480 gigabytes for a pretty small amount of money. And then the other thing you're gonna need is a USB enclosure. I recommend definitely at least a USB 3.0, but I actually recommend a 3.1 enclosure because it comes with a type C interface. Now this particular one, again, not the one I would recommend. It is USB uh, 3.1 Gen 2. However, it's kind of bulky compared to the other one that I have. And I'll go ahead and link the other one, which runs about $17 right now on Amazon. I'll link that below as well. But you can get up and running for about $82 if you're getting the 480 gigabyte SSD with the enclosure now keep in mind the one i'm going to link down below comes with a usb type c to type c cable if your motherboard happens to not have a uh, type c port on it then you may have to get some sort of adapter there but that's all you need to get up and running then you just uh take your uh, ssd and this, these things are typically toolless and once your ssd is inserted into the enclosure you just have to hook it up to your computer set up your steam library folder with the ssd put your games on it and then just play them so i'm going to go ahead and give you some speed tests from crystal disk mark as well as a loading time test of gta 5 let's take a look at the test results so on the screen now you have the different test results of testing different drives out using different configurations so on the top left we have a six gig gigabit per second SATA port being occupied by a hard drive and of course it is extremely slow then moving over to the top right you have a SSD here on a USB 3.0 interface which is pretty quick on a USB 3.1 interface gen 2 that same SSD is a little bit faster in general but the numbers are pretty uh, consistent there and then the bottom right is actually a different SSD altogether however it's on a SATA 6 gigabit per second Port. The key takeaway here is that both USB 3.0 and USB 3.1 Gen 2, those ports are not going to be bottlenecking a SATA based SSD. Now, sure, if you were running an NVMe drive on a USB 3.0 port, yeah, there would be a bottleneck there, but there is absolutely no bottleneck or virtually no bottleneck, even with the USB 3.0, and there's definitely no bottleneck with a SATA drive on a USB 3.1 Gen 2 interface. So presumably when we go ahead and run GTA 5 and load it up, and I'm using GTA 5 because it takes a while to actually load into the game. When we run it on the hard drive, it should be by far the slowest and then running on USB 3.0, 3.1 should be pretty quick and actually really should be about identical to running it on something like a uh, SATA based SSD solution bypassing USB altogether.
So as I expected, the SSD is actually a really, really, really good option for you if you want to take your game library mobily, whether you're going from a laptop to a desktop sometimes, or a desktop to a desktop, or you're going to different computer labs and playing your games there. This is a great option for you if you need a mobile setup with your game library and you can't afford to just let it sit on one computer all the time. So again, the SSDs and enclosure are linked down below. It's a great value right now for SSDs in general. They're actually at pretty much an all time low that I've ever seen. You can even get about a 512 gigabyte NVMe drive for about $100 on Amazon as well. So SSDs are a great value right now. If you are interested in adding storage to your computer or doing a setup like this, highly recommend picking them up. But I am curious of you guys, as you know, I like to kick it back to you pretty much every video. Do you use a mobile game library or do your games sit in one location, whether it be on a laptop or desktop? Let me know down below. And of course, if you like this video, give it a like, share, subscribe, and comment down below. Those things do help out a lot. You can follow me on Instagram and on Twitter at Who's Your Hardware. And as always, I'll let YouTube queue up a couple more videos around me from my channel for you to watch. I'm Shane with Who's Your Hardware, and I'll see you guys in the next video.